like the test run of it. Um, CSU, did you get on Friend Tech yet? I haven't made it yet. Um, God damn it. How am I supposed I'm to get on, my I'm airdrop? I'm en route. <laughs> I'm, I'm en route to getting it. Let's see. So I have to have more storage available on my phone. So let's see. I, uh, I need four gigabytes. Oh, I'm, I'm just delete really one more gigabyte. hoping. I'm really hoping. Dennison, I, I sent him one of my invite codes. And he, I don't know if he's used it yet. So I really hope he uses it, though. Because that would be... A lot of the founders, I've noticed, like won't get on there because securities laws yeah that makes sense um, and they're just a lot more exposed to that kind of thing uh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah i don't know if he'll actually get on dhl doesn't want me to get on there yet so wait what <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna laugh watch this watch that <laughs> talk end up being sponsored by dhl, <laughs> DHL. <laughs> dude what if you're the D- dhl influencer that's like, what i'm cool. saying yeah about our sponsors are being the most like random trad fi <laughs> like sponsored by the United States Postal Service. <laughs> <laughs> you oh should my gosh. you should make one of those like purposely shocking and offensive like Zoomer TikTok accounts like like the ones with the product managers by the pool. You remember that one? They're like, yeah, yeah we love working in product management, and they're just like not working by the pool. Like <laughs> <laughs> you should do that, but for for like yeah for this this idea like just leave your shit everywhere dhl it to yourself yeah that's honestly not a bad that's not a bad idea at that's all. that's not a bad idea at all dhl no. would definitely like reach out i want to see maybe i can see if they're like tiktok guys like a zoomer chick and then they'll we'll definitely no, they don't have they have a tiktok well you know how like weird companies well, have tiktoks what are the odds that their zoom their tiktok person isn't a zoomer chick Right? Hi. Look, Hi. look at this. Look. They're hey. a German. Company. But to me to me, like you wouldn't even have a TikTok if you like didn't have that person, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think it has to be a chick. Which it's, they got a I fifty billion dollar saying. market cap. Look, oh it's definitely a chick. <laughs> they 100% have a it's TikTok a chick. Account? It's look at this one. This one's try not to change your wallpaper challenge, and it's like <laughs> four pictures of oh like DHL <laughs> planes. Dude, I, lo- I love the world we live in right now, man. <laughs> wow, sick. Yeah, it's tough. Look, challenge failed. We change it right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll reach out later today. Anyway. All right, shall we shall we begin? All right, GM. Hey everyone. GM, How welcome we to welcome to Dot Talk. This is a new intro. Say goodbye to our normal <laughs> intro. Uh, this is Dot Talk. Dot Talk Weekly. This is episode fifty-two, I believe, which is would be a year, right? If we did it every week, but we've spread it out. So I think we are about a year and a half in, but this is episode fifty-two. So fifty-two episodes, pretty pretty crazy. Um, I'm Tommy. And I'm Prisha. And I'm a cool horse girl. Let's go, baby. Welcome to Dap Talk Weekly. Um, yeah, I, I think like having this be more of a conversational vibe is probably uh, more interesting uh, for us as well as I think the listeners. puts a lot less pressure. I mean, we end up always just like talking about things in a conversational way anyway. So like... And I... I feel like we need to like get away from the thing where the Tommy's like, Frisian, what do you think about this topic? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to unload like a disturbing, like lead, uh, intense take about this for like two minutes. And then Tommy's going to be like, oh, uh, thanks, man. Okay. <laughs> next topic. Next, no, yeah. Moving on to the next thing. I, yeah, we can, we can still get the disturbingly long version takes without them being so like formal. Um, my favorite version takes are on our like one on ones or calls where he just goes off and it's just like, Yeah, dude, send it, bro. Send it. Post it on Twitter and he's like, I can't I can't do it. Too many eyes on me now. Really? Tom is just on Instagram, just like I'm just talking, he's on Instagram. I finish, he's like, Yeah, dude. Nice. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Well, this week we earlier in the week we were talking like we really should avoid talking about front tech. Um, we were talking about what the Italian newsletter should be about this week. What we should talk about on Dow Talk. 
And I think uh, as the week progressed, we kind of realized like, yeah, maybe we're going to have to talk about this. Um, so we have a tweet up right here. This is one from Frigian he sent earlier in the week when he was like, this is what we're going to have to talk about. You know, we're going to have to talk about friend deck. Well, we can get it from a, from a DAO perspective. And I think um, this kind of goes into a broader theme of like how we bring the normies into the DAO ecosystem. But friend tech seems like a pretty good way for a non-technical person to start a DAO. Four steps. Spin up a new Twitter account that represents the DAO. Connect that Twitter account to Frentech. Whoever holds the share of that account is a DAO member. And then step four, the chat room is the DAO discussion. If you're not familiar with Frentech, that is a pretty great example of what it is, right? Like you spin up a Twitter account, you connect it to Frentech. It allows people to buy, I guess they're, they're called keys now, not shares, of that account or of that person, that wallet address. And then there's a um, a chat. I mean, right now, I guess it wouldn't work 100% because it's like, it's one-to-one, the conversation in the chat room, right? Like you can, the person who owns this, who is running, who, who owns the wallet can communicate to everyone. But if someone responds, only the person who runs the account can see that message. So I think the, the concept here is good, but obviously an execution would be a little bit different, but I think of this as like a, I've been thinking a lot about like consumer crypto, you know, I think seed club has been doing a lot around this as well, but like, how do we bring the DeFi power user DAO infrastructure to the, the normies, to the consumer crypto people, um, and, and, you know, implement the rails that we all know and love and we see how powerful it is, um, without it being super, you know, technically challenging or, you know, intimidating in a way. Um, I think this is kind of like a, a nice step in the right direction. Thoughts, anyone feel free to jump in. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> don't go, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go, you go CHG. Yeah. Um, no, this is so cool. As like a non frontech user yet, I think I just have to offload Subway Surfers and then I'll have the storage required. Um, but yeah, as a non-user, like this seems really cool. However, like what's the difference of the ease of using this to the ease of using Tally or like any front end for uh, governance? Because this is cool in that like it's completely non-technical, but how many DAOs are completely non-technical? There's, there's some pretty interesting, there's like a pretty interesting kind of onboarding playbook that, that Frentech deployed or like stack technology stack and UX um, that that's like pretty innovative for onboarding people quickly. Um, they used like a, custodial wallet um that that leverages something called multi-party computation uh where friend tech can like deploy the wallet for you uh but it doesn't expose the private keys of the wallet to anyone including including friend tech um and they also used something called a progressive web app which is a way to get around the app store's rules um that like the app store not allowing the the iOS or Apple's app store not allowing like a lot of crypto payments is is like a key thing that's blocking um you know crypto UX right now probably the the it's like a top 3 blocker for crypto UX and uh the way that you like download Frentech onto your phone is you open it in Safari and then there's this flow where you can like download it as an app onto your phone but it's still operating within safari which allows which like circumvents the app store yeah rules and guidelines but still allows a lot of the functionality like notifications um on your phone and so like you know uh that's like a big part of this is you know i've had a lot of conversations with dow builders who are trying to more get into the consumer space or like address a non-crypto native audience and just like literally that step of like I want to get involved in this. How do I actually participate? It's just too hard. Like getting, you know, a wallet and uh, acquiring voting tokens or acquiring the NFT 
even if it's free, right? <laughs> like, and then figuring out how to participate is like literally too, too difficult. Um, and also like, I think there's an even higher bar for being a DAO builder. Like that's just ridiculously hard <laughs> to, to do safely, um, as a non crypto native person, um, or even, a a more crypto native person who's not, you know, super technical. And so I think it's just like, just using this like basic kind of infra using front tech as like infra to like do, you know, communities, uh, is, is interesting. And like, we, we kind of saw this, right? Like a bunch of DGENs, they spun up like, uh, I don't know, this was in like wave one of friend tech adoption. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I, I had this weird experience where I like went on vacation. I like found friend tech was really into it, like went, got all over it and then just went on vacation. So I don't know what happened the week after that, but in the first like day of friend tech, someone, people kept spinning up these like quote unquote DAO accounts, um, where they would be like, okay, this account is actually representing like the following people and here's are the rules like if you buy the shares we'll buy them back so everyone should like ape into this like you know it was like you know uh crypto twitter enu <laughs> like account um and uh yeah it's kind of interesting because it was easy for people to onboard and also they couldn't rug it right like because the the dynamics for like buying and selling and fees and liquidity are already baked into friend tech you can't do the like meme coin dev thing where you're like R ape into this meme coin but then the dev is behind the scenes with permissions to everything you know racking everything so yeah it's kind of kind of interesting i think too like even friend tech is still like when you really think about it it's not it's closer but it's not anywhere close to like making it DAO participation easy for normies because it's like, yeah, okay, you can get it on your phone and you're, you know, you're solving the, or you're kind of solving the not being able to deploy on the app store, but you still have to bridge the base. You still have to have a wallet. You still have to know, like, I mean, and Coinbase is helping with that because, like, Coinbase is a great on ramp for people and people trust Coinbase, but like, then you got a bridge and you have to know what a wallet address is and you, you, you know, like there's still a lot of steps that are just going to take time and time to like get to the point where we have something like Shopify where it's just like my parents know how to use Shopify. Right. And they know nothing about, uh, the internet at all, but they understand how Shopify works. Right. And that's not like a shot at them, but it's like, from from us being like early adopters of this new internet you know it's like you got to get to that point and it's uh maybe i was naive but the more i'm in it and the longer i'm doing it, it's like that is such a massive massive like lift right and it's it's not one group can't do it it's everyone collectively moving that way and when the DAO space is small it's like you know i don't know Kind of rambling there, Frigian. On, on the topic of friend tech and DAOs, I actually think friend tech is going to, if it is successful, which is unlikely, um, well, I think it's already been successful, but if it somehow has like ongoing staying power as a meaningful social media app, which is unlikely but possible, um, I think if that happens, friend tech will become the biggest DAO. And like, I'm by DAO in this case, I mean like a real DAO with like actual you know, on-chain control from the users. And the reason is because um, the like the creators on Frentech who, who end up building big accounts, they will not allow, like, the team of Frentech to, like, make arbitrary economic changes. Um, th this battle, like, already happens, right, in regular social media companies, but the social media company always wins. <laughs> but, like, that's not going to happen. Like, if it does happen with Frentech... It, everything will just go to zero. Like it will just zero out front tech instantly. I think that's one of several things that happened with BitClout that, that caused it to zero out. Um, so I think like it, and I think like racer, the team that, that built, uh, that built, uh, front tech understands this because they're like very, very crypto native. And like, yeah, I, I, I think part of the playbook for something like friend tech having staying power beyond just like it having real utility, which is like the first step um, beyond just speculation is like actually figuring out a way for the creators and the people who are spending a lot to have control over the economic rules. Um, thus making, giving people confidence that it's not going to rug them over time. Yeah. 
Sushi. Yeah, that means it has to be on chain, which like Fred, you mentioned in your tweet. And I think like we've seen other tools like random type of social media esque things that are sort of off chain or like DAO adjacent um, that sort of spiral into oblivion, right? Because just nobody uses them. I don't know if anybody's still using Warpcaster that much. Farcaster, I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever it is, but yeah, yeah. Actually, like that's a that's an interesting topic. So like Farcaster has been doing really well um, over the last like month. I, I've been using it. Um, Vitalik, that's like his the only social media network he's using right now. He uses it super actively, and there's a few other people like Bology and um they they got some like really high profile people to basically just use farcaster i think they like farcaster because like vitalik is hilarious like he makes a post on farcaster and there's like you know like 15 replies and it's all like humans <laughs> you know so it's, it's not like twitter where he makes a post and there's like 25 like inu like accounts being like yes make eth go higher <laughs> you know um and so uh i actually think like social media is a meta that is like emerging and here to stay um i think lens also i haven't like used lens as much yet um but i think they've had some success as well so i actually think this like web3 enabled social media is here to stay and it's kind of interesting because farcaster lens and frentech are all different approaches like actually very like if you dig into the what they're doing and like which parts of it are crypto enabled. It's like a very, very different approach. Um, and also like the core audience on each is really different. Like Farcaster is very builder heavy. There's just like a lot of engineers um, who use Farcaster or like technical people. And then it's kind of engineer and NFT and like the overlap between those two is their core audience. Whereas like friend tech is like the gambling crowd on crypto Twitter and then lens like I haven't dug as deep into it, but I think there's, they've done well with kind of like the creator economy side of things. Um, and so, yeah, there's like a lot of, there's like three different social media cat, uh, uh, apps that actually all have like meaningful traction right now, um, <laughs> like in play that are web three enabled, which is like pretty crazy actually. <laughs> um, and I think is going to play a big role in like the, yeah, the next couple of years. Is there anything else we need to touch on around friend tech before we move on? I feel like, you know, we took it, we, we got a good angle on it, you know, something a little bit newer that, you know, it's not the usual friend tech takes, you know, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to call my shot. I don't think friend tech is done. Like it, it might eventually go to zero for sure. In fact, that like I would give it greater than 50% chance of going to zero this iteration of it. But I think there's going to be multiple additional waves of like non crypto native creators that get added to it that cause like more speculation waves. Um, so I think, I think we're just getting started with the front tech speculation, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. And that's super exciting. Cause like there's a ton of uh, opportunity to Dow pill people that come in. Right. In a natural way. Right. Like, not really understanding that it is a DAO or, you know, you're, you're using crypto rails and then being like, oh shit, like, yeah, this makes sense. See shit. I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you going to talk? Am I crazy? Did her controller die? Is she, can she hear us? <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm here. I, I thought it was yours. Yeah. I lost you, Tommy. For yeah, real? it's you. Yeah. It's you, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah, it was pretty brief, yeah. though. I think we we're good to go. I was yeah. like, wait, what, what the fuck happened? All right. Well, yep. some some on chain news from the space. Nouns DAO V3 upgrade, which was on or is on tally, um, a very large proposal around the Nouns fork, which we've talked about in previous episodes. But I don't know how up to date you guys are with the Nouns ecosystem right now, but. Um, I'm pretty out of the loop. It seems like it's going to pass the proposal. If you're not watching, it transfers over $4 million. Let's see. Let's see. This one's a little bit spicy. If you read into it, I just have a little bit of background via uh, writing about it a tiny bit in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, but like even the, just the, just scroll down just a bit to the very top where it, um, of the proposal. Mm -hmm. 
So it's saying like, uh, just, yeah, there. Um, it's saying like, it's an exact replica of a previous proposal, but uh, it's also a quote unquote, yeah, statement of resilience, um, a pledge that will not be broken or canceled um, because they're basically calling out the um, proposer of the previous proposal for canceling it bef after it passed and before it executed. Friz, do you have any extra context on this? I mean, I'm not in nouns, obviously, right? But nouns always has something crazy going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we talked about this a few weeks ago um, where <clears throat> nouns has this plan to, like, make itself forkable so that people have the right to exit and with the ETH treasury from, like, via DAO governance. And I think, like, people realized after the kind of spec was published that, like, uh, there was a, an, that, like, the, the, the economic incentives would be to just, like, attack the DAO over and over, basically. So, like, people could exit with their ETH, but then, uh, you know, they could kind of just, like, repeat that process over and over as the treasury built up um, with the kind of like uh the whatever the canonical nouns fork is and so uh i th i think like i haven't dug deep into it but i think people kind of got cold feet about, <laughs> about the upgrade um you know due to that uh but they're kind of like uh yeah <laughs> like committing fully to it here um but yeah I'm, I'm not deep into this um the thing that's most exciting to it about it to me is like uh this proposal was actually created on Tally, which is pretty pretty crazy. Um, in in general, like ninety plus percent of on chain proposals are created on Tally, but Nouns is like the one major exception. And the reason is kind of cool, which is that Nouns has all this like really good like homebrew DAO tooling because they use the treasury to fund teams to build DAO tooling, <laughs> um, which is which is dope. Um, there's like yeah. Uh, like nouns.wtf which is a really cool uh not nouns kind of governance client um but uh so so tally we haven't necessarily always been like the tool of choice for the nouns ecosystem um but i think what we're seeing is like uh if you're trying to make like a really complicated really important on-chain proposal tally is kind of like this the most efficient and also the safest way to do that um so like if you look at what's actually happening on chain here there's like nine things there's there's like nine function calls. Um, if you just go to like the custom action uh, section or executable code, it's right above the receipt thing that says $4 million. Yeah. So there's like nine steps that are happening on chain uh, to like actually execute this proposal, which includes like a lot of money moving and also protocol upgrades and like stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, pretty stoked that this, this was created on Tally. I, I think people are voting on it elsewhere. Like maybe some people voting on Tally, some people are voting on it elsewhere. But uh, yeah, I was stoked on this, but I'm not like all the way tapped in to like what, <laughs> what, the, yeah. what the drama is. But yeah, it looks yeah. like it, nouns proposals you can cancel, um, which not all DAOs have cancelable proposals, but you can see like a previous version of the proposal was canceled. Um, so yeah, it does look like this one's going to stick. The, the nouns governor's model is it it's completely different than governor alpha or governor bravo right like or is it built off the same smart contract you get what i'm asking yeah yeah it's it's like a pretty i think they they rolled with a lot of like very composable and standard parts of governor uh, but they kind of like uh customize like it some for for the nft kind of yeah. like the big difference is like before nouns was the first like popular governance contract that where the voting power was like one nft one vote so one erc 721 one vote previously it was like erc 20 um so we i know like tally when when nouns kind of like came out and got popular we like made an investment to make sure everything worked with with noun style DAOs. um but i think we were able to do that partially because they made a lot of good decisions about like the contract and making sure it's like as compatible as possible with with governor generally nice okay yeah i was wondering like who exactly made their version of Go governor it's interesting 
there, there's like, a lot of very technical people in nouns. It's like a, yeah. it's like a builder community. That's like what's bullish about it. But also, like, I'm gonna say some some controversial shit. Although I think people are now realizing this, like, uh, which is part of what's happening with this proposal. But like, if you look at the economic model of nouns, it's like pretty similar to ohm. Um, and as someone who like got introduced to the space by being hardcore rugged isn't the right word, but just like, uh, by not understanding the, <laughs> the economic model of Ohm and being taught a very like hard lesson. Uh, like when you look at now, it's like, it's, it's just very similar, <laughs> like borderline, like, you know, it's not one for one, but like, yeah, the, with the dynamics that are playing out are basically the same. Um, and so it really incentivizes like uh it's really if you're an early if you're an early investor and like you don't sell you're just going to get like diluted really aggressively over time um but i think like the people i think the people who built ohm like this is a controversial statement in and of itself but like knew that uh, <laughs> i think they were like hardcore defi people who like you know uh understood most likely how things were going to play out. Whereas I, uh, I genuinely think a lot of announced people were just like naive, which is like, okay. Right. Like they're naive specifically to crypto economics, which I think is like, okay, like valid experiment. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I think it doesn't really matter whether the original team was like intending for things to play out the way they did that just like the economics of it is, made it play out the way that it did um but the actual community is like not hardcore DeFi people it's like engineers and designers and like art people you know and so um they have built a lot of very innovative things like uh like smart contract primitives and clients and art and stuff like that so um yeah ir irrespective of like where things go going forward from now it's like there's a bunch of stuff that got shipped that is like kind of important you know going forward to the ethereum ecosystem which is dope yeah hell yeah hell yeah all right let's move through some of the on-chain proposals from this week we've got a bunch a couple from arbitrum dow ap6 and aip7 AB6, Security Council Elections Proposed Implementation Spec. Pretty standard. Pretty boring. Nothing like... Boring's good. I'm not saying that in a bad way. But um, we've talked about Security Council Elections. We're building up the UI for that for Arbitrum DAO, which is pretty sick. We won't go too deep into that because we've talked about it almost in every episode. But something I really appreciate about Arbitrum DAO is... Their proposal descriptions are absolutely massive every time. I think some people maybe might not appreciate that, but if you're watching, it's taking me like a solid 10 seconds to scroll through the entire description of the proposal. But I think we've talked about it, but I know Arbitrum DAO is run by a lot of very professional people um, who care a lot about the space. So appreciate that. We have AIP7, which is pending. So I'm not sure if this is... Is this, this is like a legit proposal, right, Frision? Um, Arbitrum one you say legit. <laughs> um, so I don't yeah, mean like, like, like no, I don't know what I'm asking. That was a dumb question. I think it's because I don't see any voting on it. That's why I'm like, yeah. Oh, just... Well, it hasn't started yet. So the Security Council elections one is active for voting this is a different proposal that's just like making some minor tweaks to governance but there's a three-day delay on arbitrum proposals before they go active for voting um so there this one this one goes active like tomorrow okay. or something yeah. that makes sense that <laughs> uh, makes but sense. yeah like if, if you look at arbitrum in general it's like very active like it's really picked up it it took like two months plus to get the first proposal on chain governance proposal live on tally but now it's like there's like multiple active at a time frequently, which is cool. Yeah, I love it. CSG, any closing thoughts this week on DAOs, DAO talk, tally, existence? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of lots, as per. Um, 
Yeah, the one thing I was thinking we should do like a DAO best practices um, type of like episode um, for this one, just when there's sort of a lull in stuff. Even what Frisian just said about Arbitrum having like a three day period before it goes live. Um, I've just in the last like even in the last month of like working at Tally and talking to random clients and DAOs, uh, people have so many questions that are the answer is like purely opinions based, but like we're somewhat qualified, right, to give those opinions. Um, and I think that'd be a really helpful. Uh, somewhat. Somewhat's an understatement. I think we are just the saying most humble, qualified. Tommy. Yeah, I know. But like at a certain point, you know, we've been doing this long <laughs> enough where we're like, me and Frisian have always been like, oh, like when we first started, we were like that scrappy upstart team. We're like, we're just producing, 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 getting people on, getting people on. Now we're like, oh shit, we gotta like, we gotta, we gotta like step into the fact that we have established ourselves as like uh, a prominent voice in the DAO ecosystem. Not, when I say us, I mean Tally and the the team at Tally, um, and making those resources as available as possible. Because so I think like the prediction we always had was like, yeah, it's a small industry, and like we believe in it, and we in it there's a chance that won't be successful, but we know like if we can spread the message and people could see the power of it, uh, it'll, it'll be that. And I think we're starting to see that happen. So it's like, okay, yeah, fuck, here we go. It's happening. Like the office meme is like, Oh my God, Oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think Dow best practices would, would be, you know, great content going forward on a podcast and written. Yeah, it's like those like rappers when they like get win some massive award show and they're like, you know, doing that like the, the cameras on them, they're doing that like just like shocked face of and it's like somewhat, you know, upplayed for the for the camera, but that's that's us or at least. <laughs> so oh us. shit. We we oh fuck. We didn't what? Oh, we were right all along. <laughs> right? That's oh, I think that's what you have that. to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was harking back to that tweet that's like, um, I'm, it's like, I'm betting that X is going to moon. And if it doesn't, like, then I'm going to delete this tweet. <laughs> like, you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Same stuff. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's on chain summer. I think on forever on chain summer. I think we're all, you know, Frisian was when we talked about like post FTX, you kind of predicted like, I, you know, it sucks and it's bad for the ecosystem, but I think it's going to be good in that everything's going to be driven on chain, and uh, that's great for on chain DAOs and for tooling companies that support on chain DAOs. So, yeah, pretty sweet. Any closing thoughts for everybody? I'm in Cleveland this this week. Cleveland's wonderful this time of year. I will not be returning, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry for anyone that's from Cleveland, but I know like Ohio people are like very like, fuck yeah, Ohio. Yeah, we love Ohio. So I'm sure they won't be too offended, but uh, I'll be back in North Carolina next week. Frigid. Is that really what Ohio people are like? Dude, Ohio are people are like, nuts. Well, have I'm you heard drink. Logan I'm... Paul? Ohio yeah. fried chicken? Is it? I don't know what it is. OFC? Wow. Gonna, what? Yeah, Apparently, Ohio people are yeah, nuts. I'm gonna wake you guys up. I guess oh. they're just overcompensating because they know it's like, oh, you know, they know I it doesn't have Cincinnati. a lot of attractive qualities. Yeah. Okay. I went to Cincinnati once, and I I was like, wow, this is one of the best cities in America. Straight Are you up. serious? Um, wow. Yeah, but it is that trope of like, it's like you go out for drinks in a new city, and then by the end of the yeah. night, you're like, damn, I could move here. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, is it the drinks or is it? <laughs> yeah. Was it the yeah. drinks? or? But I, yeah, you know, um, Dude, it was frigid. a good time. At that time I was living in my car, so, yep. <laughs> Dude, frigid. was my family here in Ohio? You know, the hot topic this week has been Salt Lake City. I think we're all, like, actually oh. considering, like, mo moving there. Like, it seems to be what? the move. I'm not Have kidding. Have any of you been to Salt Lake no. City? No, but you... <laughs> <laughs> no they actually they have they have they've been to salt okay, lake they, okay, they have okay. friends that live there and i was like nice. oh frisian's always like saying like this is the place this is the place and i'm like i haven't been there but everyone who's been there has been like it's amazing and people that live there are like it's amazing so you know i moved to north carolina without even visiting north carolina so like i'll do it <laughs> i'll salt lake is, do it salt lake is very nice yeah he's like don't move i'm no a big fan <laughs> it's uh 
it's a lot nicer than Ohio. So, <laughs> yeah, just FYI. Most places are. Everyone. Most places are. In fact, I know this is true because, like, a lot of people from Ohio move here <laughs> for that reason. It makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> but then it's just um, filled with people from Ohio. So, that's just kind of how it is. It's this, like, really weird melting pot of, like, melting pot's a strong word, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically just like a lot of mormon people um and then just like people from like mostly it's the midwest is like the biggest group of people um is it, denver is like this too it's just like people from chicago you know um, but yep. salt lake is like more interesting than denver because it's still like the mormons are like the dominant culture so it's like weirder if that makes sense <laughs> whereas like denver kind of has this like npc quality because it's just like only transplants from like the midwest yeah. but uh yeah there's a That's lot a of people take. from there's a lot of people from like ohio and michigan and Bo like massachusetts i would say it would be like the top three top three salt lake movers like and then as soon as you like meet someone from one of those places if you become friends with them then you meet like all the other people from that place uh so like like I met this like super connector crazy guy named Corey when I first moved here and he was from Boston and next thing I knew I knew like 15 people from Boston and Salt Lake and they were all like yeah it's <laughs> fucking great out here you know and I was like wow cool that was a great Boston impression man yeah that was, that was great you guys ever been to London though what if we all moved there that'd be crazy <laughs> yeah you I do like right? rains and beans yeah, beans for breakfast, uh, year-round seasonal depression, and uh, adherence to some outdated, weird monarchy Stockholm syndrome shit. But you know, besides so that, those are, yeah. those are all <laughs> three of those are all fair takes. Um, <laughs> what, which one's not? You can go to the pub on a Tuesday and you're not an alcoholic. That's crazy. No, but you are. You're just surrounded by more, so you don't think more you are. alcoholics. Mm. <laughs> Fuck, you're like you're like getting ganged up on here. Oh, fuck you're you gonna guys. get to come up with some like additional selling points for like Tommy who like doesn't drink and works out four hours a day <laughs> and prefers to like you know see the sun. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh, walkable cities, walkable cities. Fuck Bro, you guys. You don't even you don't even we, know what a walkable city is. We, we won the no. war in the 1700s. Why would I go back to Tommy? That's what, Tommy's, my... a, Tommy's a redneck, so he doesn't even like walkable cities. Like, yeah, you know, I just like I really want to be able to like drive my truck around Central Florida and like check in on some swamps and shit like that, and like listen to Morgan yeah. Wallen. So like, he's just like, I don't think the walkable city thing is like get, really gonna Dude, make a lot of hell? traction. What? You got you. Get him, you probably, get him. <laughs> Fridge, he's been writing in his journal about me, just waiting to drop <laughs> these fucking what? takes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, what part of that take is untrue? No, you're, I didn't say it was wrong. I didn't say it was wrong. I'm just saying. I wasn't even damn. saying that was a bad thing. I'm a, oh. kind of a redneck as well. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah, like, dude, he's like from. He's from where I live. Like, relax, <laughs> relax. No, but uh, we won't Virgin's be moving to London. From, Virgin's from, uh, like the best city in America. Charlotte's like, I know, bot I town, know, but bot yeah, city. No, Charlotte's not USA. Not, yeah, but okay, Winston Salem is more. <laughs> Let me just say, I, like, I definitely wouldn't advertise Salt Lake City as the best city in America. <laughs> no, that's Miami because that's Miami. <laughs> oh, okay. But like, the uh, best city doesn't mean the best living place to live, right? Like, maybe our definitions are different, but like, I definitely agree with that because I think New York is the best yeah. city in America, but like, would never live there ever, ever, ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hmm. Well, I I think London's probably dope. Uh, we need to go visit. You know, I've been. I like it. I'm just <laughs> not well, gonna move there you. anytime soon. What okay. about Edinburgh? There's May, yeah, possibly. stacked up plague bodies like right across the wow. street from me, like from nice. 1200. It, Plus the Scott... the DHL is really active there. They can get you stuff pretty quick. DHL like. is. I didn't get to do my DHL plug. We need to do like. Do you think if I yeah, made, you know, if you make, if you make someone like a, have you seen like, oh, that girl's like, I made this resume all special for Spotify, and it's like Spotify themed resume, and she's like, and that got me the job. So it's like you put in the effort before you get the job. So I'm like, uh, yeah, oh guys, yeah. I did this podcast plugging you, and I've just made twenty TikToks and a Twitter thread. 
It's not a bad idea. You know. Yeah, live love well, DHL. So. I'll see you guys on chain, and uh, let us know if you like. I think this is a better version of Dow Talk. Yes, what CHC? This is a Closing side question. Thought. Go for it. Well, uh, maybe this is relevant. Uh, what constitutes <laughs> someone to get in the top twenty DAOs on Tally? Are we going off of market cap? Are mm-hmm. you talking about like on the Explore DAOs page? Or you're just like ranking. Diva Dow's like, have you seen Diva Dow's like bragging about it? Which like cool, oh, but I did not like, see that. Let's go. Let's well, go. They haven't even before the first proposal was like created, they were number 14. So they are flexing that fact on Twitter. But I, first of all, I love that Tally is a flex. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've it's a very complex algorithm. No, um, I think it's mostly based on number of voters. So like number of voters that have uh, okay. voting power like delegated, but I think it is slightly more complex than that. Maybe we should write about it. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. That's been Dow Talk episode 52. See you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Bye guys. <laughs>